So it's interesting because I watch these videos when I go to upload them on YouTube. I, I, uh, I watch them, you know, so I can post like, hey, you know, this, I talk about stuff that maybe someone would be uncomfortable with and I try to mark it or, oh, I said I would link these videos, so I link them. Um, you know, I try to follow through and also it's very interesting to see where I was at then versus where I'm at now. Um, it's interesting. I just watched a video of me being in shock at my parents' positive reaction to me being trans. Um, my mom is still very supportive, but my dad is not. And I knew that could happen. Um, that's, I guess, why I'm not as angry about it as maybe I should be or something. I don't know. But it's very interesting. I... I, I think until that moment, I wasn't sure I could get through it. And it, it's really interesting watching, you know, me have, like, these moments of clarity or process things or figure stuff out. Um, like, I just... It's, it's very strange to watch myself. It's like watching a stranger because I'm so unused to looking at myself but I am starting to get a little more masculine which is a relief um but at the same time I just I find it very impactful um it's almost like watching someone else come out or someone else who just talked to their parents about being trans or you know like it's interesting I did put the link in that video, I actually put it in another one too, uh, for that doctor thing. Um, if anyone actually wants to get educated from an actual doctor, in the, you know, he's teaching other doctors in the United States how he treats trans patients and what medically goes on and all that stuff. If you, I, I mean, I highly recommend watching that. Um, maybe I'll put a link to it in this video too just because it's it's very informative um it's very interesting it's long and it's you know a bunch of medical terminology in some places but it's it's very interesting um yeah i don't i don't know i don't think my relationship with my father will ever improve i think that was me just being very hopeful but How good I felt about that, I mean, despite the shock, obviously, I felt good. You know, it didn't change anything. I, I am still going slow with things and stuff, so I'm glad of that, at least. <laughs> like, it didn't... But, um... I don't know, I wouldn't mind getting some of that hope back. I see a lot of people who um, wish that they could go back in time to this or that. They're, they're, li they're like, oh, I grew up with this, 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 and this, you know. You know, they're like, oh, you know, I wish I could go back to the country I grew up in or things like that and stuff. And I'm like, that's not how I feel at all. And it's not just because of, like, growing up in an abusive environment. I didn't grow up happy about the country I lived in or, you know, growing up with those things was not a positive thing at all. Like I see people do the, uh, you know, recommending being slapped or spanked or, you know, hit with a flip flop or a switch or whatever. And they talk about it in like bond ways. And I'm like, no, I don't have bond feelings about any of that. They talk about, like, oh, they want to go back to the country, you know, they grew up in where they went to church on Sunday and they, you know, went out to eat, you know, every once in a while. And they had, like, this, I guess, positive experience or something with 
the country being the way it was and where it was okay to be gun toting and all this stuff and stuff and I'm just like no the thing is is even if that was somehow happy for you and you genuinely have good feelings about it it's not okay that you get to have a little bit of a happiness because the country was like that while millions upon millions of people were suffering like while you were quote unquote happy like the other people were not they weren't okay they don't have this fond memory like you do they didn't enjoy it they were miserable as crap like People, for whatever reason, relate how happy other people are or how okay people are with their own experiences. And I don't know, that just seems counterproductive. Just because I had an abusive childhood doesn't mean that everyone had an abusive childhood. Just because that's my experience. And just because someone else may have had an awesome childhood doesn't mean everyone's childhood is awesome. That's not that's not realistic that's just your experience and maybe you saw the country as a positive thing because you were white and you grew up in a, a family that was middle class or something and could afford things but the person down the road you know a few houses down might have been in absolute poverty and misery like the country wasn't great just because you had a great childhood I haven't got hope about things going back to how they were because I don't want things to go how back. I want things to go forward. And that includes me. I think somehow this process is helping me move forward instead of being backwards about things. like. Like, for me personally, it's like I'm moving forward. Some people had things, and I was just so jealous of them, and I don't want to continue to be jealous. I want to have the things that I actually want to have. I don't think that that's terrible. I think more people should get to have a happy life. It's sort of tragic that there's so few people who actually got to have a happy life. And it's also so tragic that that's what they called happiness. Like. Like, calling that happiness to me is like settling. And there's something to be said for being content and for appreciating what you have. Absolutely, there is something to be said for it, but settling for something not that great and then trying to convince yourself that it's better than it is to make yourself feel better about it isn't being content. It's being a denialist, in my opinion, and according to a lot of more factually based information. I don't want to go back in time, I want to get away from back in time and move forward in time. And I don't just mean that in trans ways, I mean that as a person. I mean that as me. The way things have always been done wasn't working. It didn't work. It hasn't worked. So why continue to do something that magically isn't going to start working? when there's other processes and systems that are better. Like, I can't be the hypocrite who's like, oh, the country needs to change its processes and not be willing to change processes myself. I've spent my whole life living for my family and for the people around me, even complete strangers, just everything always revolving around all of them, and it's never worked. I didn't feel like I could maybe transition and be me 
until my parents didn't show complete extreme rejection of it. Because there's a codependent something going on that's not correct with me. Not because it was oh so great that they didn't react as terribly as they could have. My mom did react great. My mom reacted really great, and my mom continues to react really great, but... It's being dishonest to myself. You know how I know? Because I have not changed my name on any public anything. Like Facebook and shit like that and stuff, you know. I haven't changed my name. I haven't come out to everybody. Made it a public announcement. Been more positive about it. And I can be a denialist and say, oh, it's because I'm going slow. And part of me is. Part of me is going slow. But that's not why I haven't done it. It's because I just don't have hope. And I'm I'm clinging to old patterns and I need to stop. I have tried my whole life to be a good person. I have tried my whole life to be a person of character. And it's never worked. I've I've never been enough. Ever. I've never been enough. I need to somehow accept that I am a good person. That I am a person of character and it doesn't need to be something that I'm constantly trying to strive to prove. It's not about everybody else, it's about me. And just being who I want to be automatically makes me a good person. Being who I want to be means that there's some people who just aren't going to be in my life anymore. And I... I got some part of my, I guess, identity, some part of my well-being, my security, out of being completely revolving around others. And I still like helping people. But I like helping people because that's how I am, not because I'm desperate. I've spent my whole life being desperate. I'm trying not to be anymore. Because therapy for me, finishing my therapy, oh, it's about trauma and blah, blah, blah for some people. But for me, it's about getting to myself. And I can do the transition later. If I need to wait on transitioning, even if the world is taking away trans healthcare and going backwards and being stupid, and I'm scared of that. I'm scared that I won't be able to transition later because it'll all get taken away. But even if somehow that happens, I don't want to transition and not be me. And being me isn't just being male. Being me is being not desperate. And some desperation won't change until I am male because that's what gender dysphoria is and does. And after half of these videos, I go have a panic attack because I mentioned it. And I'm trying to be all like calm and collected on the video and then I just end up crying on the video and then dissociate a little bit and then the video ends and I'm dissociating and then all of a sudden panic attack time yay and whatever because how dare 
me try to process me. But I think part of the reason I can't identify me sometimes is because so much of my identity is caught up in taking care of everyone around me and tiptoeing around everyone around me. Not just my masculinity. I've come to the point where I've, I'm pretty much in acceptance that I'm a dude. That's not um, as much of an issue as it was, you know, two, three months ago. Even, you know, when I very first ever started considering it years and years ago. Like, I mean, I've, I've come to some sort of acceptance of that, you know. It's important for me to be a man. I am uncomfortable not being a man. I'm uncomfortable with every single part of me that isn't masculine. But I'm also just as uncomfortable. With everything in my life revolving around people. And not me. It's just as not okay. And if there was a surgery I could have to change that, then I would have that surgery. But instead, it's therapy. And it's getting to know yourself. And it's watching videos of yourself, talking to yourself, and remembering how you felt at that time, and, and looking at yourself, and and seeing yourself honestly, and not trying to run away from it. Because it's it's not the past that anyone is looking for, even the people who say that they are. They just want to feel good in the future. I am going to try to help that one day, in these videos that I'm making to myself, of myself, blah blah blah, someday they are more hopeful. Maybe I'm not very hopeful now, and maybe that's a struggle for me now. Or maybe someday not. Maybe that's just where I am right now in my life, is this darker place, but... I need to hope that it's not always going to be that. And I don't just mean that I'll be a dude. I mean I'll be a dude who doesn't live for everyone else every second of the day. That I will actually do something I want to do and not feel guilty about it. just as much as someday I want to actually be able to feel a physical change. I want to feel that too. And I used to be worried that me transitioning was me trying to fix my life or me trying to step into some better life or whatever. And it will be a better life. But what's going to fix my life is me. Me being, not just me physically, but me being me internally. What's going to fix my life is me not disregarding how I feel just to make other people more comfortable. Focusing on the future and hope and that things could get better and, and that I could meet me. I said earlier today in the video I recorded earlier today that my dad met me and he didn't like the person he met and he would never hang out with them if he had a choice. I think I like the person I am, and I would hang out with me if I had a choice. And I don't like hanging out with people, 
but I would hang out with me. Depressing and depressed as I am. I haven't been able to say that almost at all in my life, so that's something. And being able to say that gives me hope. And hopefully I can hold on to that. And it might not be a very big thing, but... I don't know. It feels like some sort of breakthrough for me. I've been worried before about doing these videos and posting them and being like this and stuff, but honestly watching these and looking at them and seeing seeing myself grow I'm glad I did this it's like it helped me when I made the video and it's helping me again now <laughs> who knows maybe Someday, like a year from now or a couple years from now, I'll go back and watch some more of them again or, you know, stuff like that. And it'll help me again. Keeping a record of my raw meeting myself. Hi, me. You're not bad. And the only thing I wish could go back and all that is that I wish I would have known that I'm not bad sooner. I don't, I don't need someone else's approval or okay to just be. If everyone has a right to exist, and I genuinely believe that, then that means I have a right to exist. And that's important. There's more to me than being trans. 